Welcome to the most overrated, underappreciated, most viewed, underviewed podcast of all time. Welcome to the Prince of Fresh Air. This is your host, the most charismatic man in entertainment, aka Mr. No Days Off, with a special guest. That's right. You wonder who he is. Uh, he's a fellow Bonaventure graduate. He graduated in May 2020, and he also hosts the Serralo Sports Talk, which he interviews former and current athletes of our generation and before our generation and the future generation. Introducing Joe Serralo. How you doing, man? Mr. No Days Off. Thank you for having me, brother. I'm doing great. I could not be better. I'm pumped. Great start to a long weekend here joining the show, man. Let's get it on. Absolutely. It's going to be $15,000 just to start. All right. So I'm just, <laughs> I'm just throwing that out. <laughs> I appreciate the heads up. So, you know, let, let's get right into it. Let's not put people to sleep. So, you know, as I introduce you i said you you host the serralo sports talk which is also available on spotify apple Podcasts, and anywhere you can find podcasts um just tell me me briefly about your your podcast how did you get involved and, and stuff like that how how has the journey been for you yeah so it's been really interesting actually serralo sports talk was my old college radio show that i did at uh, our, our alma mater saint bonaventure and when i graduated school you know obviously in a pandemic the job market was less than ideal to graduate. Absolutely. So I said, all right, I've got to differentiate myself. I've got to figure out a way to stay hot, get reps in, and you know, pretty much keep a brand there for myself so that when the job market does open up, I've got demos, I've got fresh up-to-date material to send out. And I said, I'm going to keep my show, Serralo Sports Talk, my college radio show, which I took to each of the past three Super Bowls, Radio Row the week before the game. I've interviewed over 200 athletes, coaches, celebrities. I said, I'm going to take that and turn it into a podcast, Serralo Sports Talk. It's available, like you said, anywhere that you get your podcasts. Right. And so far, we're 16 episodes in. I've had a couple NFL players on. I've had a couple commentators from ESPN. People from Barstool have hopped on the show. Man, it's a fucking blast. <laughs> I mean, I, it sounds like it's better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I would say that, but you know, it, it's an uncensored, unfiltered look into the world of sports with yours truly. And we just have fun. You know, we go out there, whether it's 45 minutes, whether it's an hour and a half, dropped an episode this week with former mm -hmm. NFL player, Ryan Leaf, the second overall pick of the 98 draft. A lot of people know the story. You know, guy was a bust, got some, uh, got in some trouble, drinking, drugs, DUIs, and never had an NFL career, but he's turned it around, is now an analyst and a broadcaster, works with Sirius XM, worked with ESPN. So it's a great story that he's got. And, you know, I had him on the other day. We had a blast. I did my open on the Monday night football game, Browns-Ravens, the game of the year in the NFL. And, you know, even for some people in Western New York where we went, where we went to school, I gave Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills some love on the show. So it, it's always a blast. <laughs> every, every week I come out with an episode. It's a good time. Man, the Buffalo Bills, don't even get me started on that. <laughs> they're having Chiefs. a hell of a year. I think that they're the biggest threat to Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Uh, I wouldn't know. I'm not going to lie. I don't. I Football is like one of my least watched sports. I, that's fair. That's why you have me here. Yeah, true. That's why, I'm, you that's why I'm here. You're the voice of the people <laughs> that <laughs> exactly. I don't listen to. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Um, you know, as we talking about saying Bonaventure, I actually didn't like this um, – this uh it was like a, a podcast of sorts but it was for the radio show um as you know we had a radio show and mm -hmm. it was called bonus is wrestling and i went by the name of mr 240 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal and uh, <laughs> oh the 240 <laughs> of twisted steel and it's sex, sex appeal. appeal that's amazing yeah that's it was a good time it, we we just talked about wwe and like all the okay. other pro wrestling sports um but I realized, like, I, I wanted to do something on my own. So that introduced me to the Prince of Fresh Air, which I started actually during the pandemic because, you know, acting, the the, the entertainment industry was slow. Uh, work wasn't coming in as much. Um, so I said, you know what? This is a good way to keep me busy. You know, who don't want to hear charismatic voices? So I missed hearing your voice before you started this. I know that for sure. <sighs> my ex does too, but we can't always get what we want. <laughs> Uh, that's relatable. That's relatable. <laughs> All right. So let, let's kick this off. Let's not put the people to sleep. So uh, I wanted to talk to you because I know you do sports. So mm -hmm. I'm sure you, you pay attention to boxing. Um, I'm a big UFC guy. Um, so I wanted to get your thoughts on before we get into the main juicy uh, stuff for this podcast. Um, did you watch uh, Jake Paul versus Nate Robinson or Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr.? And what was your opinions on that? 
Yeah, I did. And I actually loved it. You know, unlike you, I'm actually not a UFC guy. I'm not a WWE guy, but I am a huge boxing fan. Actually, during the pandemic, I took up boxing myself. I started back in July. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it. And I love the sport. It's a beautiful sport. It runs in my blood. My grandfather who, uh, who passed, I mean, I never met him. We're talking like 40 years ago, he passed away. He actually was a gold glove champ in the Navy in World War II. Wow. And so I love the sport of boxing. It, like I said, it's, it's genetic for me. So I did watch those fights. I actually lost some money on Nate Robinson. I figured, you know, growing up a Knicks fan, watching Kryptonite win three <laughs> slam dunk contests. I mean, don't forget, this is a guy who in college at the University of Washington, which is now Pac-12, was then a Pac-10 school. We're talking a major college athletics program. This right. guy played three freaking sports. He played college football. That was originally what he went for. He also ran track and played college hoops, of course, ended up having a professional basketball career with the Knicks. I mean, I thought he was going to win. I was like, look, I know he, he, I know he's five foot eight on a good day. I really think he's more five, six, five, seven. I know Jake Paul has the advantage in reach, which of course is a big deal. And Paul had Absolutely. a six inch advantage in terms of reach. But I said, man, Jake Paul's a pretender. Nate Robinson and everything he does is a contender. I'm going to go with Nate Robinson on this one. And he sucked. <laughs> He oh. wasn't ready. Oh, I was man. really, really <laughs> fucking disappointed seeing what Nate Robinson did in that fight. I thought I was going to get more out of him. I thought it would at least go the distance. I mean, seeing him in the second round go down like a sack of potatoes was an embarrassment to him. I mean, you know, he's, of course, no pun intended. He's rolled with the punches because he took a lot of heat on social media and he embraced it. He took it well, but it was embarrassing. I expected a lot more. I expected a lot better out of Nate in that fight. Uh, Cause I still, I don't think Jake Paul is, is legit. I don't believe in Jake Paul as a boxer at all. I think he's a shit stirrer. I think Jake Paul is, you know, someone who just goes on the internet and says dumb shit to get clicks. And I guess he's good at that because we all know his name, but I don't think he's a boxer. I think he's a pussy. Oh, uh, fair enough. I, you know, is I actually kind of didn't believe Nate Robinson had a chance. And I say that because boxing, as you know, cause you started doing it. Boxing is a very tricky sport in the sense that it takes a lot of time to get the fundamentals down. You have to understand footwork. You have to understand the jabs and, and the crosses and the hooks. Nate Robinson didn't have enough time to prepare. So I already knew right off the get-go, Jake Paul already had that advantage on him besides the, the weight and the reach. Um, I didn't think Nate Robinson had a chance. And mostly because fighting is a lot different than, you know, all the sports that he did where yeah. in basketball, you can be athletic and run and jump and dunk and stuff like that. But when you're, when you're getting punched in the head, it don't matter how fast you are, that hook is going to hurt you. And I don't think he had the proper training, let alone the technique that he was using, like the bum rushing. There was no technique. Exactly. Yeah. You, don't, you don't bull rush in uh, in boxing. You bull rush if you're maybe a, a middle linebacker in football trying to get through an A gap, but you don't bull rush in a boxing ring. Exactly. Exactly. And he was bull rush. I don't know what his corner advised him. I don't know what feedback they gave him because after that first round, they should have told him clean that up. That, that That's just nasty. But nonetheless, he kept doing it. And the only person that really succeeded, and I say really because I'm taking that with a grain of salt, is Mike Tyson, because his style was that way. He when he fought taller guys, he can bum rush you. His head work, his head movement was just that nobody can do, do it better than him. But he had the 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 physical attributes to do that. Nate Robinson didn't, so I don't know what his game plan was if he had one. But I was not surprised. But that knockout was. <laughs> To, I, I mean, he's. I, probably, couldn't, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I, it, it was nasty. It was nasty to to see that, and I hope um, it doesn't change his outlook on boxing. Hopefully, you know, he finds this as a way to continue to grow and continue to doing it. But you know, I'm not. Is Jake Paul annoying? Yeah, but I'm. I, I really don't hate the guy. He he just. He's like the Conor McGregor of our generation. He knows that pushing buttons and oh, saying wow. things. I don't yeah, know if you can make that. I mean, but, but Conor McGregor can back it up, you know, Jake true, Paul, true. You know, and I know he just, he, you know, knocked out a professional athlete, Nate Robinson, and I'll give him credit where it's due for doing that. But Jake Paul can't back it up the way Conor McGregor can. Now Jake Paul's trying to fight Conor McGregor. And honestly, I hope to hell it happens because Conor McGregor will give him the ass whooping that that kid deserves. I want to get in the ring against Jake Paul. And I mean that wholeheartedly. <laughs> I'm, I would not say I'm ready now. I've been doing it like five months. I would say in a few months, I want to get in the ring against Jake Paul because he's a nobody. And I yeah. think that 
he would not last the distance with me. I think that I would knock Jake Paul the fuck out. Oh, I, I already know I could, but I'm already like <laughs> twice his size anyway. So that, that goes nonetheless. Um, but that, you know, that brings me to my next point. Um, the main conversation I wanted to have was celebrity boxing. Um, you're seeing this time and time again, you know, we talked about, uh, Logan Paul, uh, Jake Paul versus Nate Robinson. Now you have Jake Paul going against Floyd Mayweather in a couple of months. Um, what do you think about the current state of boxing? Do you think celebrity boxing is taking away the, the true essence of boxing? Yeah, so it's tricky, right? Because with the emergence of the uh, UFC, and you know, you got to give Dana White a ton of credit. He is a marketing genius. What he's done mm-hmm. with with that league, uh, he's overtaken boxing. You know, Ultimate Fighting is where it's at. It's what people our age prefer. I, I know, you know, you do. I don't, but I'm a rare exception. I'm also a 22 year old who loves baseball, and there aren't too many of those out there right yeah, now. True. <laughs> so, so it's all UFC is where it's at right now. For me. I love boxing, but boxing does need to reinvent itself a bit. You know, back in the day, you in any any decade, any era had maybe eight, ten boxers that anyone, any casual fan could name. Right. Nowadays, you ask people to name boxers. I mean, Floyd Mayweather was retired for a while. He's coming back to fight Logan Paul, Jake's brother, which he's going to embarrass him. Uh, but nowadays, if you ask the casual fan who they know, it's Deontay Wilder, uh, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua. Joshua. Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather. I mean, I'm trying to think as, as a casual fan. I don't really know if there's too many other names out there outside of three to five guys that they're familiar with. And that's a huge problem from a marketing standpoint for the sport of boxing. Now, I love it. I mean, there are fights, you know, there's an IBF super middleweight fight that I could get into now or I could get into later on January 30th that I can't wait for. Uh-huh. But, you know, that's because I'm a boxing enthusiast. Those are far and few between right now. So maybe celebrity boxing is what they need to draw interest back into it. But you also maybe have celebrities do one of the earlier fights and, you know, headline it with a legit fight because you want to get the audience there. And then, you know, maybe, maybe Logan Paul, Jake Paul will get the audience to tune in. But then once they're there, headline it with a big one because you need the real sport to get more love from the casual fan because these guys, Logan Paul, Jake Paul, these guys are not legit. They say that they're going to be legit. They say they're going to be boxers. They ain't shit. And until they fight real fighters, like hopefully Floyd uh, embarrasses Logan Paul. But again, why does Floyd come out of retirement, uh, retirement air quotes and fight Jake Paul? I think uh, Logan Paul, I always confuse their names together, but I just think that, that's that's just too beneath them. And w- what's happening is, you know, I'm a UFC guy. So when I see boxing headlines and I see that the biggest draw and in, uh, in boxing is fighting a YouTuber, my automatic response is, where's the other boxers at? You know, I, I remember Andy Ruiz. He he blew up out of nowhere, but that was only because he was Not given that opportunity. Anthony Joshua, baby. Exactly. And a lot of these boxes are, you know, Charlo Brothers, for instance. Um, they're fighting year long and, you know, they're always in the ring, but they don't get the same opportunities that Jake Paul and Logan Paul get. And they've been doing this way longer than they have. So again, I know there's a market for, for celebrity boxing, but I think it's overtaking the sport because when you look at um, the, the Tyson, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. Fight, the, the second and main event was uh, Jake Paul versus Nate Robinson. So, I think if they're going to do that, at least put, you know, the, the secondary main event at towards like the prelims. So it gets people amped up and it gives those boxes who's been doing it for years and a long time, the opportunity to get their shine on. But a lot of these boxing cars, especially when you throw YouTubers and celebrities, nobody's watching it for, you know, the Charlo brothers or whoever else is fighting on the card. They just want to see Mike Tyson, you know, Floyd Mayweather and the YouTubers or the celebrities fighting. So um, I just look at it as a negative because the UFC don't do cross promotion. They don't do celebrities come up in the octagon and fight. And you never see YouTubers or celebrities call out John Jones. And you don't see John Jones going in the octagon with him. I don't know. There's many different reasons why that could be. But I just think boxing is a little less dangerous than UFC. So it's a lot easier to... 
to I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's totally less dangerous. I, I completely agree with you. You know, I got into boxing. I wouldn't try my hand at UFC. That's just not for me. You know, I don't know grappling and Brazilian jiu-jitsu and, and all that shit. You know, I figured I can learn how to box and I, I can, you know, I throw a pretty good punch. I can, you know, I can translate that into boxing, of course, with, you know, with the footwork and the head movement and the mental aspect of the sport. You know, I, I figured that I, I could translate some stuff that I already have into that. UFC, I wouldn't go near. And, you know, if Jake Paul, Logan Paul stepped into the octagon with John Jones or Kamaru Usman or, you know, Jorge Masvidal, they wouldn't just get knocked out. They could get killed. And that's why oh, they yeah. don't, that's why they don't venture in into that sport. But also the reason that the UFC uh, on their end doesn't go after celebrities, doesn't need to, is because they don't have a marketing problem. The UFC right now is profiting. Don't forget throughout this entire pandemic before, before any other sport, baseball, football, basketball came back in, I believe July, that was when baseball came back July 24th before any of that. They were having UFC fights. You know, Dana yep. White set up Fight Island. That's how that's how much the sport has flourished. That this man got a fucking island in the Middle East and he was like, it's a go. We're not missing any time because of a pandemic. A pandemic can't stop the UFC. And, you know, even though it's not my personal thing, you'd be an idiot not to recognize the absolute brilliance and genius from a marketing standpoint uh, and from a business perspective that Dana White has brought to the table since since buying that company. A hundred percent. And and you hit it right on the head. That is the biggest problem is marketing. When you look at UFC, besides, you know, the Conor McGregor's and the John Jones and Khabib Nurmagomedov's, you can name at least 50 other fighters. Francis Ngannou, uh, Cain Velasquez, uh, Donald Cowboy Cerrone, Anthony Pettis. You can name uh, hundreds of other fighters that aren't even on the John Jones level. Boxing, you only could probably give me eight. And that's being generous. And it's that's tough. the issue. They're, they're having these YouTubers headline pay-per-views to, you know, bring in revenue, which is great. I'm not knocking the, the business side of it. But what about the people who are, who are trained to do this stuff? They're not getting an opportunity because you got celebrities taking their spot. And I get it from a business standpoint. Do that. I understand it. I know there's a market that people will pay to see Jake Paul get his ass kicked. But you're also sacrificing that spot for other people who's been struggling, who's been clawing their way to the top, who has gym fees, who got a life to you know provide for, a family to provide for. And you're giving it away to people who haven't even trained in the sport for like two years. It's ridiculous. I think it's redundant. And it's a slap in the face, not only to boxing, but to boxers, actual boxers. Because now it's showing people that all you got to do is create a YouTube channel or go viral on social media and you'll get the opportunity. All you got to do is call somebody out and that's it. Yeah. I and look, I don't disagree with you at all. I don't disagree with the damn thing that you just said. The bottom line is though, it's a dog eat dog world, right? And boxing has to do what's best for boxing. And if boxing puts, you know, the Charo brothers on a pay-per-view fight, or if they put the Paul brothers on a pay-per-view fight, they're going to make more money with the Paul brothers being on a pay-per-view fight. You know, that, tr right. uh, that, that Triller lineup, you know, I believe, yeah, Triller, it was presented by Mike Tyson, Roy Jones, Jake Paul, Nate Robinson. They made a ton off that fight. I mean, that got people to watch. I watch. I know a lot of other people that watch too, you know? Now, right. I watched, I will say, if it was just Jake Paul, Nate Robinson, I would not have bought that. I bought it for Mike Tyson. I wanted to see Mike and Roy Jones go at it. And that was worth every penny. Jake Paul, Nate Robinson was not, but it's all about money. And, you know, you, you asked earlier to answer a question that, you know, you posed before, why would Floyd, Floyd Mayweather stoop down and fight Logan Paul? What's Floyd Mayweather's nickname, baby? Money Mayweather. Because yep. he's getting way more money fighting Logan Paul than he would fighting probably any other professional boxer right now with the exception of a rematch with Manny Pacquiao. That's why. Right. All about the green. You know, that's a good point. And my only thing is this, if they are going to go that route, have like a special pay-per-view for that. You know, if you're going to have, let's say 30 pay-per-views out of the year and you have every pay-per-view headlined by the, the Paul brothers or celebrity and under it undervalues the fighters who are actually out there trying to make money. So I would, for me, if they're going to do that, I think they should just make it uh, a celebrity pay-per-view where they have celebrity boxes or YouTubers come out and fight instead of, you know, taking an opportunity year long from other fighters who's been training for this moment. 
And when I say that, I say that because, you know, when you look at basketball uh, and, and baseball, they have certain events. I, I can't remember the exact name, but it's it's probably like the All-Star Weekend. So they have like a celebrity All-Star have, game at the NBA, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They'll have a celebrity All-Star game. They'll have celebrities come out and pitch. But then that's it. That's all they do. They're not playing uh, against the Rockets. They're not playing against the Lakers. It, it would take away the importance of the sport. So that's my only grip with it is that it's not so much the celebrity boxing I have a problem with. I have a problem with them taking opportunities away from other people. So if they are going to go that route, put the, the Paul brothers on their own pay-per-view and not lump them a, on one pay-per-view, take away, you know, three spots from other fighters who, who now can't make money to support their families and, you know, just make it a more celebrity centric pay-per-view. Just keep Jake Paul and Logan Paul on one pay-per-view and give the fighters their own pay-per-view. And, but like you said, there is a catch. You know, there's money to be money to be made. So I'm sure a lot of these boxers probably want to fight on the the Paul Brothers pay per view. But in my understanding, I don't think boxing works the same way as UFC. Where, for instance, if Conor McGregor fights, uh, when Conor McGregor fights um, Dustin Poirier in uh, next month, the fighters on that card will get a bigger purse because the money comes in. I don't think boxing works that way. I think whatever you agree to before the bout is what you get paid besides, you know, the main, main event attraction. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, I just don't know if the, the rewards of the, the risk outweighs the rewards for the sport in general. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's true. And right now at this point in time, there's not as much money in boxing as there is in the UFC. So, so it is tough and you do have to weigh as a boxer, when you're taking a fight, you know, you have to weigh a lot of, a lot of different options and a lot of different, uh, a lot of different things going into it. So I, I do agree that, you know, knowing McGregor is a headliner, you're going to make more money, even if you're the first fight of a, of a five night card, but in boxing, it doesn't matter who else is there. You know what you're going to get going into it. And the only way you could make more is if you win. Right. And, and, you know, that's a, that's another thing I want to touch on was the money aspect. That is another issue. You know, Clarissa Shields, I'm sure you probably know her. She did an interview and she talked about the reason why she's leaving boxing. It's because the money is just not there. When you look at the breakdowns, you know, the money Floyd, May uh, Floyd Mayweather makes or the Paul brothers make, they make triple than what she makes. And she was a champion for many years. But in the UFC and the MMA, I I'll speak more from the UFC perspective. If me and you have a fight in the card, and let's say you knock me out in highlight fashion, not Which only is do you how we go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not the Spider-Man multi-universe, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, so let's say you knock me out, right? Not only do you get your money, but you also get a fifty thousand dollar bonus. Mm -hmm. So there's an incentive for you to to make more money. And then you also get sponsorship money. You also get um, uh, pay-per-view money as well. And certain 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 uh, athletes only get that. But there's an incentive, and you get paid more. So Clarissa, Clarissa Shields can make twice as much in one fight than she did a whole year in boxing, fighting in the UFC or in MMA. And boxing is a very, is it? I, I wouldn't say cheap sport, but it doesn't pay the fire as well. Now, when you look at the baseline of it, because I did my research on this, on the baseline, boxers do make more than UFC fighters. But when you look at the bon bonuses, the, the the fight night bonuses, the knockout bonuses, the submission bonuses, it, it doesn't compare. If you want to fight, not only do you get a win bonus, but you get a, a locker room bonus, you get a knockout bonus. So you probably make, <clears throat> excuse me, an uh, entry-level UFC fighter will probably make 12000 to win, uh, to show twelve thousand to win, so if you show up and win, that's twenty four thousand dollars plus an extra fifty thousand dollars plus another you know ten thousand dollars plus an another you know two thousand dollars from sponsorship. I mean, it, boxing. I get that they make money, but I don't see them translating that to boxers themselves. I don't see boxers retiring. That's why you have people at forty seven years old still fighting. Because they, they don't make enough money to just live off retirement. And it's sad that that's keep happening when you're seeing all these old boxes coming out of retirement for another paycheck. It's ridiculous. 
Well, well, it, it also depends. I mean, look, a guy like Mayweather is not coming out of retirement for a paycheck here. Mayweather is set for life. A guy like Roy Jones wasn't coming out of this uh, for a paycheck. You know, Roy Jones was doing this because he had wanted to fight Tyson for two decades now, and he got his opportunity. And, you know, I really think that was a great fight. I think the Roy Jones-Mike Tyson fight wasn't a celebrity sideshow. I think that was a phenomenal fight. Mike Tyson looked incredible. The fact that it ended in, in a draw. I don't know how the hell they, uh, the refs came to that conclusion. But Mike Tyson clearly won. But it was Absolutely. still a great fight. And just seeing those two go to work. I mean, Mike Tyson, his hands were still as quick as ever. And he lost 100 pounds to get down to weight for that fight. I mean, he is just still an incredible athlete. And Roy Jones, you know, he was overmatched. But the way that he hung in there, and especially in later rounds, because he was clearly overmatched rounds two, three, looked like he might not have gone the distance. But the way that he persevered in later rounds, you saw the kind of athlete and the kind of competitor that Roy Jones was. So, you know, I don't know if that fight was because anyone needed the paycheck, but it was certainly an incredible event. I'm glad it happened. I'm glad I watched that. Jake Paul, Nate Robinson, totally different story. Uh, you know, it's funny. Mike Tyson might have needed that paycheck more than Roy Jones, more than <laughs> Mayweather needs it for sure. You know, Tyson. Uh, but it's also good to see a guy like Tyson that he's on a great path right now. Right. Uh, but, you yeah, know, Roy Jones, I wouldn't say he needed the money, but I think boxing needed that fight more than Roy Jones or Mike Tyson needed that fight because boxing needed people to tune in. And that's why guys aren't getting the money and bonuses that they are in the UFC. Because right now, a lot more people, especially our generation, people the same age as you and I, they're tuning into the UFC at a way higher rate than they're tuning into boxing, which to me is a shame. But, you know, just like the case with Major League Baseball, you have to blame the sport. You have to blame the entity for that. You know, what's baseball going to do moving forward to entice younger people and people of different racial and ethnic backgrounds to tune in? What's boxing going to do to get more people to tune in? It, it, it all goes back to the sport itself, not to us, the viewers, because we, we have to have a reason when we watch something, when we tune in. There has to be an incentive there. Make it exciting. Make it worth our time. Right. Now, let me ask you. With all the celebrity boxing matches going on, do you think it takes it, it takes the sport away out of boxing? Because <clears throat> I'm not saying boxing is a sport. But when you look at other sports, they don't allow people who haven't trained, you know, performed in that sport to come in, overtake a pay-per-view, and make more money than the actual athletes. Imagine, you know, I, I say this. Imagine John Jones decided I want to go play basketball. And he goes plays on the Pelicans, right? And he makes, you know, $15, uh, $15 million for one year. Not only does John Jones not play basketball, but he gets paid basically almost the same salary as like four other players on the team. Do you yeah. think... And under, do you think it, it, it takes away the sport aspect from boxing when you have so, all of these? I, I don't. I think it's actually a really tough comparison to make because when you use that comparison of John, John Bones Jones going to play for an NBA team, you're talking about a team sport compared to an individual sport, right? So if John Bones Jones goes and does that, right, he's playing on the Pelicans. They're a team with a really young, talented nucleus, Zion Williamson, of course, last year's number one pick. Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, Steven Adams now after that trade with OKC. They're a team that's looking to go to the playoffs in a really competitive Western Conference. Inserting John Bones Jones into that lineup, not only can he now go out there and embarrass himself, but you're affecting the team. You're affecting the city. That's revenue into the city of New Orleans. You know, if the Pelicans make the playoffs, the city of New Orleans makes money. If they host right. mo more home games, you know. And, and so right there, you're changing the whole dynamic of the NBA. You're affecting other teams because a guy like John Jones would make the Pelicans worse. So then if the Pelicans in the last three games of the season are playing against, say, the Lakers and the Clippers, right? And the Lakers and the Clippers are tied and they're fighting for the one seed or something, you know, it, it, it impacts the rest of the league. Whereas boxing, having celebrities box, you're, they're only impacting themselves. They're not impacting standings. They're not impacting rankings. They're not impacting home court advantage, home field advantage, revenue going into a city, right? It's a one night thing. They impact themselves directly. Something like that would impact, would change the landscape of an entire organization, an entire league, an entire city. So, so it's a tough comparison to make, but, uh, but no, I don't think really you can go down the same path with team sports as you can with an individual sport. You know, I mean, they do it with celebrity golf. You know, you, you, you had the match, right? You got like Phil Mickelson and Tiger Woods, but then you throw in like Steph Curry and Peyton Manning and Charles Barkley. So you can do it. I think it's okay with individual sports, 
and, and I don't hate that. I, you know, it seems like you really can't stand boxing for doing this. I don't hate that boxing is doing this. Right. I just think boxing needs a better product for the real deal. And then you can do the celebrity spiel. But I, I think that, you know, boxing needs more interest and more attention paid to its real fights before you start worrying about celebrities. You know, golf gets ratings. I, I'm not a big golf fan, but, you know, I watch the Masters. People will watch the Masters. They'll watch the, the U.S. Open, right? All, all those, made the four majors, people tune in. So then when you have Charles Barkley and Steph Curry and Peyton Manning playing alongside Phil Mickelson, people eat that shit up. So if you had more top quality fights in boxing then doing a celebrity fight before Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury would I think be actually a brilliant idea but it's just a matter of getting more high quality fights out there increasing the volume right well I, I probably should have used a better example of a better team no 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 it's, it's, <laughs> no, no, no. it's, it's not on you it's just yeah it's tough. when you compare team sports to an individual sport they're totally different you know you could do celebrity tennis celebrity golf celebrity boxing but basketball football baseball you know if one team, if the Pelicans do that, you know, they're impacting the whole landscape of the Western Conference of the NBA. So it, it, it is different, but uh, but I, I totally get where you were going with that. Yeah, I only say that, well, I probably should have chose a better team because I wasn't expecting you to lift, list off all those accolades. But <laughs> I, I was using that as an example because what I see happening, because I'm more of a big picture guy. Yeah, in the short term, those pay-per-views do big numbers. But what happens is when you see hardcore fans of these sports, they're tuned out because, you know, instead of seeing like the Charlo brothers, right, headline in the pay-per-view, mm -hmm. they see Jake Paul or his brother headline in the pay-per-view. And it's like, wait, this guy has no boxing experience. Maybe he trained maybe a couple months, but he's coming in. He's taking that, the, the, the headline. And he's making more money than people who actually train it. So for me, I was just using it as an example that if John Jones went to a different sport and got paid way more to do that sport than people who actually spend it, you know, eat, sleep, breathe, and train the sport, it wouldn't be right. And I think, again, I'm not knocking celebrity uh, boxing. I think it mm -hmm. is a niche, and I think people do want to tune in. I know I watched it. I didn't pay for it, but I watched it. Um, but Again, like when you see what other um, sports, not so much golf, because I don't know how many people actually watch golf. But I mean, you, you'd be surprised the market it has. And especially, you know, when you when you throw in a celebrity match, a celebrity tournament, it, the viewership increases dramatically. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But what they also do, I, I'm not so much, I'm not too familiar with golf. So that, that could be the case what you're talking about. But like basketball, baseball, they have celebrity matches, but they keep the celebrities or those matches away from the actual sport. So, yeah, mm -hmm. you'll have, you know, a T.I. and all these rappers and actors come out and play. But that doesn't impact, you know, people's uh, standards on a team. You know, they keep that separate, you know, away from a game day. But when you have, you know, YouTubers coming on, on, on a pay-per-view that other fighters want to fight on and you take that spot away from them. They're losing money, and now they can't make money, and now they got to sit out and wait however long to join another pay-per-view because I'm sure when you have to cut weight and all that stuff, you can't just up and, and fight next week, and you have to do that whole cycle again. Um, so I, I just think for me, it just it's taken away from the sport in a sense because they're putting YouTubers on the same card as professional athletes. How in, in, in the day and age does that make any sense? You wouldn't put, um, let's say, Shaq against Francis Ngannou in the UFC. That just wouldn't happen. Now, they could do it if it was like a one-night only thing, which I'm sure the UFC would do, where they have like Shaq versus Francis Ngannou on a special night. But they wouldn't put that on the actual UFC pay-per-view. That would just be more of a special that people can tune in to watch. It wouldn't be Francis and Gano versus Shaq, and then they'll put, uh, you know, a bunch of up and coming fighters on the pay per view, or you know, Donald Cowboy Cerrone on there, and you know, you know, what I'm saying, I just think uh, it's taken away from the sport just a little bit, like for the actual athletes, it's taken away from. Yeah, no, it's definitely taken away from them, but this circles back to what I was saying before about it being a dog eat world, a dog eat dog world, man. You know, it's. And when boxing puts a guy like Jake Paul on the card, the reason that they're doing it is because if they put 
you know, maybe more deserve, not maybe definitely more deserving boxers, more qualified boxers on the card, but right. guys without as prominent a name as Jake Paul, they're going to get less viewers and therefore less revenue. So it, it's all about the green. It's all about the reason that Floyd Mayweather agreed to fight Jake Paul's annoying ass brother, Logan Paul. It's all about the money. And that's why they get away from it. You know, it's, it's not fair. And I know that that's what you were kind of alluding to there when you're talking about the way more deserving boxers. It's not fair to them. They bust their ass, they train, they put in work, and then they don't get on a pay-per-view card that, you know, they have a chance to maybe be one of the early cards to, you know, Mike Tyson and Roy Jones or whoever else is fighting. It's not right, but it's about money. And it is what pays. It is what makes more money. So, you know, I, I don't hate it. It's just, uh, I think they could do a little bit of a better job of getting more fights, you know, more high quality fights, like I was saying before, in the mix, get them involved. But I, I don't hate the celebrity aspect as long as they're prepared. You know, a guy like Nate Robinson wasn't prepared. To Jake Paul's credit, he was prepared. Now, I still think Jake Paul's a bitch. I still don't, I won't legitimize Jake Paul as a boxer, but he was way more prepared than Nate Robinson. So for that, I got to credit him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know what? You, you 100% right. And it, it really just goes back to boxing itself. Yeah. Not so much the sport, but the, the organizations that run it. Because you don't see celebrity boxing matches in other, well, UFC, you know, and I only use those two because these are combat sports. I think, of course, but you know, UFC doesn't need it. They got the yeah. they got the revenue coming in. They got the views. They got the clicks. They don't need it. But you know why they get the revenue and the clicks and the, and the, the media attention is because they put the time and effort to build fighters. Again, like I said, you can name over fifty to hundred different fighters, and that's being generous. I don't, know if I, can, I don't know if I can name that many right now, but I'll give you credit for being able to do that. Cause I'm just, I'm not as into the UFC as you are. You know, I, I watch it if it's on, I watch it if, if the guys are getting together and, uh, and that's what's, that's what we're doing that night. But I'm not, uh, I'm not as religious a UFC viewer as you are, because, you know, like I said before, I, I still do love the sport of boxing. I appreciate it for what it is. Do I think there's a lot wrong with it? Absolutely. But it, it's still a sport that I'm, I'm crazy about. Before we get right back into the action, thank you for tuning in to another charismatic episode. Um, if you are interested in being on the Prince of Fresh Air podcast, you can hit me up on Instagram at Mr. Dot No Days Off Percy. Again, that's Mr. Dot No Days Off Percy. You can also go to Anchor dot fm slash the prince of fresh air the homepage. you can also find my social media links there and if you're also interested in sending in voice messages or donating you can also do that as well i would love to use the proceeds to go to a local food bank or a warmer house and um you know i can take up to you know ten thousand dollars you know i'm not gonna complain but yeah thank you for tuning into another episode let me know your thoughts and opinions what i can improve or something that you enjoy and let's get right back to the action, shall we? Now, this is going to lead me to my next question. Okay. Who do you think is to blame for all of these new, the, the new uprising for celebrity, celebrity boxing matches? Do you blame promoters? Do you blame the sport itself? Or do you blame the fans? No, I blame the sport itself. I, I think, you know, just like uh, what I said earlier about Major League Baseball having an issue with the demographics that they're reaching, I think the only entity that you can blame for this is the sport itself. You know, right. I think that boxing needs to do a better job at promoting itself, not so much the promoters promoting their guys, but boxing promoting itself and saying, Hey, look, we've got this product. It's high quality. We've got a lot of it. You'd be better off on a Saturday night watching us than watching UFC, I don't know, 257, whatever the hell that they're up to. Um, you know, because we need more Andy Ruiz, Anthony Joshua's, you know, we need more Wilder, you know, Wilder Fury is amazing. It's once a year. Right. You know, I, right. I, I was watching um, a fight and excuse me, I'm forgetting his last name. I think it was Ortiz, the guy, uh, the heavyweight guy that lost to Wilder a couple of years ago. Barclay oh, Center. Um, Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz, right? Luis, the Cuban. Yeah. And I was watching a fight of his. It was the same night I just stumbled upon it as the Clemson Notre Dame college football game. So I guess we're talking about. I guess uh, six weeks back by now. And he was fighting on Fox, not pay-per-view. You know, I mean, a name like him, Luis Ortiz, I mean, this guy was just fighting Deontay Wilder to be the heavyweight champion of the world two years back. A name like Luis Ortiz, that should be a pay-per-view fight. 
and he was fighting for free on Fox. And then just the way it turned out, he won that fight in about, uh, it was about a seven second knockout. <laughs> I, I shit you not, the thing, I turned it on. I'm, I'm watching Notre Dame Clemson, which is a great game. I mean, you know, that went to overtime. Of course, no Trevor Lawrence, but two top four teams in the country. And I'm glued to that. And I'm like, all right, but I got to go to Fox. I got to watch, you know, Luis Ortiz. I'm thinking also the only way you get better at boxing outside of training is by watching a ton of it. Absolutely. And Ortiz, even though he's not comparable to me, he's a, you know, he's a Southpaw. He's a lot bigger, totally different style. But I figured, let me watch one of the best in the game. Right. And I turn that on and I'm all excited, ready to go. Seven fucking seconds later, the fight's over. But, uh, but you know, that should be a pay-per-view fight. And the fact that that was free, maybe boxing does need more free fights. You know, there was a fight a few years back, Manny Pacquiao, um, I can't remember the guy's name who he fought. He actually lost by decision. The guy was in, it was in Australia and the guy was a gym teacher in Australia who Pacquiao was fighting. And it was a total bullshit result, right? The guy won because he, they fought, he was an Australian. They fought in Australia and everyone said Pacquiao was going to knock him out. So I think the judges just gave it to him because they went the distance, which was total bullshit. Uh, but that was on ESPN, you know, so that the Ortiz fight on Fox, maybe boxing does need more fights on regular cable television on fox on espn on cbs on nbc in order to gain viewers but you know in in a good time in a time where boxing is popular a guy like ortiz a guy like pacquiao those names should always be pay-per-view they should always be profiting off those names because those are some of the biggest names in the sport right and and you know what man the the bottom line to all of this that we're talking about is the fact that boxing don't put enough promotion in itself absolutely for instance when they have a pay-per-view card, they put uh, Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury. It's a great, it's a great match. Don't get me wrong. But what about the other cards? Like, who's these other people? Why am I invested in them? And which is why I always give UFC credit, which is why I got into it. Because obviously, John Joe's my favorite fighter. But when I watch the UFC cards, what they do is they also take the time out to promote these undercards. So, for instance, you know, um, this past weekend, they had... Um, Tony Ferguson versus um, Oliveira. Mm -hmm. And they also had the main event. I would say the name, but I'm probably going to botch it. So I'm going to just, I'm going to just skip the main event name, but they also put no was that names. With, uh, on was, the that, was that the one with Figueredo? Or? Yeah. Figueredo. Yeah. Figueredo yeah. versus uh, Moreno. Yeah. Um, but what they also do is they also took the time to go on their YouTube and put highlights for the undercard. So people you don't know about, they, they build a, a nice little video for them showing their highlights, showing their fight skills and stuff to get people promote, uh, interested in the fight. In boxing, they don't do that. It's either, for me, they only focus on the main event and then they just throw whatever else is on, uh, you know, on the card just to fill it up. And nobody wants to sit watching boxing for three hours to get to a Mike Tyson fight and watch a bunch of nobodies they don't, they don't know about, have no emotional uh, connection with or attachment to, and just sit there and watch it. And I think that is the key problem boxing has is the fact that they spend more time promoting celebrity boxing matches than they do their actual fighters. Like the whole time Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. was fighting, the only two people, they, uh, the only four people they cared about was them two and uh, Jake Paul and Nate Robinson. But you didn't hear a, a scratch or a peep about the undercard or the people right, bu right before uh, Nate Robinson and Jake Paul. So... Mm -hmm. Until they take themselves seriously and focus on their fighters, they will never become the, the greatest sport that they used to be. Because when Mike Tyson and uh, Muhammad Ali were fighting, they were before our generation. But you knew about those heavyweights. You knew about these other divisions. In boxing now, you only know Deontay Wilder, you know, pretty much the heavyweights at this point. And that's it. You don't know any other fighter. You don't know what other skills people have. I only know about the Charlo brothers because the one of the guys that usually come on the, the podcast a lot, he always tells me about them. Other than that, I have no idea who they are, what they do, what weight division they fight in, how long they've been fighting. You know, so if they focus more on themselves as a sport and then started building on celebrity boxing matches, it wouldn't be an issue for hardcore fans. You know, I'm not a hardcore fan. I'm a casual but I see yeah. the, the problem. It's like, I'm not paying $75 to see Mike Tyson and this sit three hours for a card that is going to put me to sleep and then I'm going to miss the card itself. So, you know, what do you think about that? Do you think I, maybe I'm a little hard on boxing a little bit? No, I, I think you definitely are. 
but I also think it's a fair point. You know, I, I think, you know, when you talked about YouTube and, and the way that UFC puts clips up more often, that's a major marketing ploy by Dana White, which I talked about it before. He's a fucking marketing genius, you know? And so when you get him, uh, also UFC is way more involved with ESPN. So when you get him on YouTube, you have him putting the UFC on Twitter constantly. When I scroll through Twitter, I don't follow a lot of UFC fighters. I don't even follow Conor McGregor because I think he's a douche. I follow, you know, Kamara Usman, and that's pretty much it. That, that's the extent of my interest in seeing what UFC fighters are up to in their social lives. I follow a ton of boxers on social media. But just because I follow ESPN, just because I follow Sports Center, when I go on Twitter and it's fight night, I'm seeing knockouts, I'm seeing roundhouse kicks, I'm seeing constant highlights, and I don't even follow that stuff. Right. I'm never seeing highlights of boxing on ESPN. You saw Mike Tyson, Roy Jones on ESPN, you saw Jake Paul, Nate Robinson, but I'm never seeing fights with fighters who I haven't heard of. And I'm exactly. seeing that with the UFC, therefore I'm learning about these guys like the casual fan is, and it's what draws more people in. Right. And, and that's what's key. Promotion is is the it's is all the end all be all for everything. Absolutely. And my and you know to cap it off because I'm gonna ask you another thing too. But I think just to cap it off, yeah, that is a big issue with boxing is the fact that you know I don't follow boxing often. Yeah, I'll probably see what's up, what's going on with Deontay Wilder and his excuses or. When oh, easy, next? easy. Deontay's my boy. I've had him on my show. Take it easy. Don't oh, go oh word? Uh, I'm a yeah. big fan of Deontay. Don't I, go. Don't hey, you wrong. better be. You better be. No, nah, so, but you hey. but you got to admit, though, some of those excuses he was using after that fight. It was a little... No, no, nah, listen. Here's where Deontay went wrong. What Deontay did in that walkout, in that intro, was one of the dumbest walkouts I have ever seen. Deontay Wilder walking out there with a costume of body armor that looked like it weighed 40 pounds... I mean, yeah. the guy was already exhausted before the fight started. When he stepped into the ring, when he took that shit off, he was sweating his ass off. He was toast. He was done. That's where Deontay went wrong. Deontay, in that first fight with Tyson Fury, which was ruled a draw, beat Tyson. Deontay, I think, in a third fight would beat Tyson. Deontay Wilder is the baddest motherfucker alive. Oh, I agree. I think Deontay Wilder... Look- People crap on Deontay Wilder all the time and say he's a one-hit wonder. But look, let's be honest here. When it comes to combat... Fuck out of here with that yeah, one-hit wonder. When it comes to combat, it don't matter how many flashy spinning back kicks you can do. It's all about your knuckle game. So, mano you know, y mano. And exactly. Deontay is a mano. Look at UFC. like I, John Jones, favorite fighter could be favorite fighters. They dominate in their specific field. John Jones is a little more versatile than Khabib. Yeah. But when you look at Derek Lewis, who's probably one of the best faces of UFC right now, Francis Ngannou, these are guys that just strictly knock people out. They don't do all of these flying kicks and flying knees. All they need to do is connect with a punch, and that's it. So for people who ragdoll Deontay Wilder, I don't think they understand how powerful that man is. Now, in terms of the walkout, I do agree. That he shouldn't have wore that uh, that fifty pound. Um, that, body armor, dude, that was ridiculous. Yeah. Now, my my thing for him was this: he should have just left it at that. But then, you know, a couple months later, he went. Um, you know, uh, Tyson Fury has something in his glove. I, I don't think it was him, but I think his brother said this. Then, you know, his brother said that, and then another thing was apparently he got sick or something. I, I just think that if he would have just left it at that, people probably would have forgot about it. But I think every couple months you hear a new excuse from his brother or his uh, his agent or his promoter, I think that's why some people turn away from him because, you know, just take the loss and move on. But his yeah. the people around him are making it worse. I don't think, I think that's probably the biggest reason why. Maybe you know more because you interviewed him, but I haven't heard about the third trilogy fight yet. Well, no, I mean, when I, when I spoke to him, it was back in... Two years ago, we're talking almost. Uh, we're talking in Atlanta before Super Bowl 53. So when I, when I interviewed Deontay Wilder, we're talking like 22 months ago. So no, I don't know what, what's going on with the trilogy with the third fight. Obviously, I'm sure there's some COVID complications with it. But whenever it does happen, because I'm confident it will happen, Deontay Wilder is going to be back to being the heavyweight champion of the world. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. But, you know, just a side note, I always thought it was weird in boxing that these champions, not not a knock against the champions themselves, but how a champion can have like five, six different belts at one time. Like, 
I, I don't know. know. Maybe there's, there's different. There's uh, there's different leagues. Like there's IBF, for example, and, and I'm only plugging this fight now uh, because my laptop has about 10 minutes left before it dies. And I do want to get to this <laughs> fight before we wrap up. But uh, January 30th, there's a pay-per-view fight. I can't wait for, for the IBF super middleweight champion, Caleb Truax, my guy, another friend of the show. I love Caleb. He is fighting Caleb Plant. Truax used to hold the belt. Caleb Plant currently holds the belt. Truax has a career record of 31 and four. Caleb Plant, 20 and 0, 20 knockouts. My yeah. guy, Caleb Truax, coming for that belt. He's going to retake that. Let's He's talk. Gonna retake that. He's going to hand Caleb Plant his first motherfucking loss. Now, since we talking about pay per views, let's let's quickly get into Floyd Money Mayweather versus Logan Paul. What is okay. your official prediction? Do you think Logan Paul could find a way to to uh, knock out Floyd Mayweather? You know, it's tough. Um, my only well, whoa, whoa, whoa. first off, whoa, whoa, did you say knock out or beat? You said knock out, knock out. Because my no, thing is no, no shot in hell, no oh, shot in me, hell. Me, he, me, he 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 can't get close enough. To Floyd Mayweather. I thought you were going to say beat. And I was going to say, you know, my only concern is if they go the distance some way, somehow, that the judges go the route of the amateur there and try to, you know, side with Logan Paul. But the thing is, Logan can't get close enough to Floyd to deliver a knockout on him. Logan Paul is going to land, here's my big prediction, less than 15% of his punches will be landed. On Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather is one of the most elusive, maybe the most elusive boxer of all time. There's a reason that he's undefeated. If Conor McGregor couldn't do it, Logan Paul doesn't stand a fucking chance in hell, man. Logan Paul is a nobody. Money Mayweather is one of the best of all time. Well, I only bring that up because I didn't know if that was going to be a catchway because, you know, we seen with the Floyd and, and Conor fight that they was already about to screw Kana anyway, because when you look at the scorecards, Kana arguably probably won about four to five rounds. I, and that's oh, not I don't just, know about that. Hold on. But, were, were, were you in school watching that fight? No, nah, not like the earlier rounds. He won He He won. A, he won nah, more than one. I don't one. think so. I thought, I thought Connor won one round that night. So I was at, and, and this, is, this is for the Bonaventure audience, I was at train that night watching the fight. That oh, was yeah. the first night back my sophomore year. And I went to train, they bought the fight. And... Uh, and I was watching that. And, and I might have missed little bits and pieces here and there because there was a new transfer student, maybe like a 5'7 blonde who I had on my arm most of the night. <laughs> uh, so she might have been distracting me a little bit from the fight now and then. But what I did see of that fight, which was most of it, and I let her know. I was like, look, you know, you have all my attention after this fight, but I am very into this fight. Fair enough, fair enough. May- Mayweather wiped the floor at McGregor. It wasn't that close. And, and this fight won't be as close as that one was this fight you know i would say for my prediction second round knockout mayweather knocks out paul in the second round my only thing with that is mayweather does a lot of dancing he does a lot of you know jumping around the ring a lot of a lot of elusiveness so i don't know if they're going to get close enough for mayweather to, to deliver a knockout lick in the second round but i'm going to say this one doesn't go more than three rounds i'll go second round knockout floyd money mayweather now nah, they're definitely going to draw this out. I think they're going to milk you think, it. You think in. they're going to, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Oh, yeah. I think maybe. Floyd is going to do the same thing he did with Connor. Sap that energy, get him tied, and then but go to But eventually knocked him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Could do that. he could do that with Logan. Because Logan just isn't as athletic as Floyd. Logan can't dance with, you know, boxing is a dance. Oh, yeah. And, and Logan can't dance with Floyd around the ring. You right. know, Logan's going to want to do what Jake did to Nate. But right. Nate Robinson and Floyd Mayweather are two very different competitors. They're two very different dogs. Right. Nate Robinson's a basketball player who gave up six inches of reach and tried to bull rush Jake Paul. Right. Floyd Mayweather is the best boxer. And look, I like Manny Pacquiao more than I like Floyd Mayweather, but you got to give credit where credit is due. And Floyd Mayweather is the best boxer of his, maybe not just his weight class, maybe his entire generation. Of anyone who boxed throughout the same duration that Floyd Mayweather has been doing it professionally, Money Mayweather is probably the best of all time. My hand goes up because I don't disagree. I think Floyd gets so much hate, and he is the best, I would say, greatest defensive fighter of all time, mm-hmm. without a doubt, no questions asked. You know, I know your battery is about to die. I got a close call with John Hansen in town. Oh, is she, is she your next guest? Uh, nah, that's more of a non-business relationship. Yeah, because I got Halle Berry coming on my show next week. <laughs> Wait, come on. Are you, no, are no, you... I'm fucking with you. Uh, I'm fucking with you. I, hey, I mean, if you interviewing Deontay Wilder, I mean, what can I say? 
Yeah, and also, I also, I also got to uh, interview Tom Cruise because I'm playing police officer number 437 and his uh, new movie. So. It wouldn't <laughs> shock me, brother. It would not shock me if you got a role in one of those. Uh, Tom is coming. Tom is coming. My agents are working very hard. But uh, there you go. There you you go. know, just to wrap this up, man, um, you know, I plugged your show anywhere people can find you or, or you know, support your channel or your podcast or anything. Yeah, no, Serralo Sports Talk, one more time. We're on uh, we're on Apple Pods, Spotify, Google Pods, anywhere you get your damn podcast. You can find Serralo Sports Talk. I post most of my interviews to YouTube as well. And uh, check it out. It'll be worth your time. Absolutely, man. It was good to have you on the show, man. I, it's, always great great to, up, brother. it's always great to have people who are knowledgeable about a certain topic because it makes the conversation way more easier. So I look forward to have you on the show again because we're going to do this again. Anytime, my man, anytime. Go Bonnie's. Go Bonnie's, man.